All right, episode eight of the Avids and Beyond, and uh, my special guest joining me this week is none other than Tim Mossberger, the archivist for the Avid Brothers. Tim, thank you so much for coming on with me here tonight. Glad to be here. Uh, first, I got to say uh, thank you for putting my show in the latest edition of your uh, Long Story Short Patreon page. That was really cool to see that. Uh, I kind of didn't expect that. I opened it up. I'm like, whoa. There's like a whole two-page spread here going on. I was uh, pretty excited by that. Well, I've been enjoying the show, and I know it's hard to spread the word of things. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I just figured I'd do a little bit. i help uh, you a little bit. I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, th- it's been going pretty well. I've gotten some good feedback, um, you know, lots of views on YouTube and stuff that I, I put these videos on. So uh people will be checking you out as well yeah now you're you're my first big avid celebrity that i've had on really because uh everyone that knows the avid brothers follows the social media pages and all that they know you because you're like uh avid google for everyone everyone goes to you for everything does that ever drive you crazy that you're always tagged in posts and no, stuff it it no i don't take anything online that seriously <laughs> i know most people mean well yeah I mean, most people, almost everyone means well so it doesn't it doesn't ever bother me. It obviously in these days I can't always answer right away, but I try to try to get to everything and every email, every message. I try to get to it when I can. I don't, you know, put any pressure on myself to do it, but when I can, I do. Yeah, that and it's great. I I know it's appreciated. Everyone appreciates everything you do uh for the fan base and for the band and for everything. Um Tell me about the database that you started, because I know th- it's not all you uh, that no. takes care of it. It's a lot of people. Well, but when, when did it start? How did it start? What is it all about? Well, I originally started a site and uh, called it, is it when my, uh, wait, uh, let me think of it. I don't even know. It's been so long since I did that. Uh, it's a. Uh, my life turns to a song, you know, I put up that site just to put all the information I had up online. Mm-hmm. Then it was Paul who had the idea for the database. He built the database. I mean, he put it together and then I just more ideas. I, I mean, I don't know how to program anything. I don't do any of that part. I log in the information. And okay. if I say like when we recently last year added on the set list pages, the band lineup, you know, I asked for, Hey, can you put a spot so we can have the lineup to who, who was in the band at this show? Right. And like, I, so I'm with, I do that stuff and then I plug it in on each show. Um, so I do the, I just, the more the ideas and the information, Paul is the man behind like putting it, he put it together originally. So, and then he has people who help him and, we have some other changes coming. I have a meeting Saturday with the person that we're going to see what changes we do make to it to improve it even more. Is this a full-time job for you guys? No, I mean, I don't know how much time Paul sp- spends on it, but I mean, I've spent, you know, obviously thousands of hours linking videos, especially since once we had it put up, I mean, I have to go in and link a video, find the video, link yeah. it to its set list page. And I go through each show and find every video I can on YouTube. And uh, and then also any information and all that's still a work in progress to go for every show. And it's a lot of shows. So, yeah. So, so it's a lot to go back and same thing, you know, getting people to upload photos and then I have to prove the photos. Right. And, you know, and Paul does a little bit of that. But I mean, I'm most of the time I'm putting in the set list. I do all that. Like if I'm at the show, Paul usually does it sometimes, you know. So, but, you know, yes, it's a lot of work for me and Paul to do, to keep it going, but you know, the fans love it so much. It's not, I don't know. It's not work. It's just, it's what it is. Time consuming, I guess at times. I I spend a lot of time putting it, you know, going through everything and making sure everything's right. Right. Then when I find like, say a set list in 2007, something's wrong. Like I go back and fix it. Like I'm always doing that. Like I fix a lot of things. That's why if you look at, like the top songs played all time it actually yeah. changes quite a bit because either i find a new set list or I fix something and like it alters a little bit even though the top 20 is pretty solid these days of you know like head full of doubt and yeah Launch sure room are pretty high up there so all so, this information is just in your head can you recite everything that's on there or uh you know i don't know a lot i mean basically when you spend a lot of time like 
<laughs> so when I like right now, say I go to 2013 and a show in February, and I'm making sure every video is on there or going through the videos and adding all the information. You know, I spent so much time doing it. Yes, I remember a lot of it offhand just because I've spent time dealing with it. Okay, so but, here's you know, a quick question. Quick question. February 20th, 2000, how many times has that been played live? This was a question that came up last week with John Crow. Well, only only a couple. Well, here's the problem, though, with that is, what do you mean? You know, we don't have every single set list, say, in 2002, 2001, where they would have played it more. That's true. Obviously. So you don't have you all know, that stuff. No, I mean, it was impossible. Who would have who would have kept track of the set list in 2001? <laughs> true. I true. Mean, it took a lot of work to find the show dates for there of digging through newspapers. Right. Like, you know, that information just isn't there. Like I know you no. had the first show that Bob did with them. Yes, and that, that was took a lot. That was a big deal to find that actual yeah. date. I remember yeah. you t- that, talking about that. The, the, the other big show of that time period is the show where he like officially quit his other band and became, and you know, joined the Avid brothers full time. And he spelled yeah. Avid wrong in the, yeah. Um, in his note. Yeah. <laughs> Which is but, funny. Uh, no, I mean, you know, well, they played it back in, uh, what, 2005, February, on February. Well, it was actually February 19th, but the show went over to midnight to February uh-huh. 20th. Okay. They played it. Then they played it in 2011, at um, where they also played a couple other rare songs that night. And then they played it, what, At the Beach, after right. it was brought up, I think, at, uh, you know, John. John, John yeah, John's the one that brought yeah. it up, and then they played so, it. So, yeah, he that's his yeah, claim so, to fame, I think. But... You know, and there's been other shows they played on February 20th and it's been asked for and they just, you know, Seth didn't play it. But but they obviously played it a f- at least a few times early on. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm sure they did, especially before they became the Avid Brothers. I'm sure he played it, you know, when they were still going by either Sharp Thing or Nemo Downstairs. How know. many times have they played any of the songs off of that first EP? Because you don't hear, I you don't see it very often. I know. No, that. it's uh, the most common one is is because it's usually a you know usually a fan request these days. Mm-hmm. That's the only way one of those is getting played. Right. I mean, you know, this it isn't gonna, and even then, that's it's not gonna happen. I just think you know those songs are so far back that not only do they maybe not remember all the words, <laughs> right, and how to play it, and then to find a way to play it with the full band. They would have to rehearse it, you know. And yeah, so if it's just, just requested think, I mean, on the spot, that's going to be hard for them yeah, just to, to rattle you know, That's off. like even when they played, you know, Old Wyoming came back, not this most recent time at Red Rocks, the time before, you know, yeah. they had to have the lyrics written out and right. put up on stage because they didn't know, you know, they weren't going to remember them. Yeah, so, they, they did that, that for the, Vic. That was pretty cool. Yeah, la- that would be the problem year. with all of that is that just remembering – you know, and then some of it, they, you know, like I Love You Still, they've never played. That's one of the rare songs that, you know, because originally on the album, that's a Seth on piano and they never had a piano for the longest time. Wow. And then also that song's pretty personal about his high school girlfriend. So I just don't think it, it ever, you know, never got played early on and certainly it's never been played in recent times. Yeah, His high school girlfriend was Jenny, right? Yes. There's a lot of songs about Jenny. Yeah. Um Obviously, she had quite an impact on him. We wrote a lot of songs about her back then. But uh, yeah, yeah. does he not play those basically? Because do you think it brings up bad memories or it's just that it's that long ago? I don't think so. I just think they've moved on. (laughs) All these newer songs, they've moved on and they don't necessarily. And I I know that I can't remember. It was probably Scott who said they don't necessarily relate to those songs as much as they did. But the thing I would tell them if I had the chance would be, but us as fans, we still relate to them. We, sure. you know, but the problem, the thing is, is the artist's vision of a song is different than the fan's version of a song. And it should be because, I mean, we hear it with our own ears, our own life story. They Absolutely. have their story. So, so sometimes, yes, they intersect, but they're also separate. So, I mean, they're going to, I just feel that some of those songs for the time being, I don't think forever you know, they're going to be playing for a long time, I feel like. So I don't think it'll be forever. I think there may be a time they revisit a lot of these songs. I think they will. But I think for the time being, you know, you know there is the songs of the last, you know, 12 years 
that are way more fresh and way more interesting for them to play and way more relatable for them oh, to sure. play. And now with a new album coming out, I mean, they're going to start, I would think, focusing on playing some of those songs but too. At even shows. on that, the last couple albums, whether it be because of the pandemic, you know, they don't play that much from the third gleam. Yeah, they really except, don't. Except for Untitled 4 is the only one that really gets played, you know, has been played a lot. And a lot of that was even before the third gleam came out. Right. But And then closer than t- together, you know what gets played out you know not very most of it some of it hasn't been played at all right and there's some and, songs on there i'd really like and, to hear and i kind of blame the pandemic a little bit on that that yeah i think they just moved past that album really quickly as artists and moved on from it and then you know you think it was partially because of the some of the political themes and stuff that there was a little backlash with that you know, I would like to think that they wouldn't care too much about that, that they're still going to play what they, I always think that they play what they want to play, even though right. they do, like any band, you're going to cater to the fan, like you're going to feel like, oh man, we should play Kick Drum Heart because we feel like they're going to want to hear it. You know, there's going to be a little bit of that. Right. But I just don't think, you know, when they get out there and play them, maybe they just weren't feeling them as much as, you know, they recorded them because that's how they felt at the moment. It's the song they wanted to record. It's the music they wanted to release. Sure. But maybe live, they just, you know, they just don't feel it fits in the set list, don't feel like it fits in on the night. I mean, I don't think it's it's completely the political thing or anybody, any backlash. I just think that some songs they just move on from and some are going to be moving on quicker than others. It's just because the same thing happens with covers. There are covers that get played one time and some stick around. And, I, and it's just because that's how they feel about playing it and what they want to share with us. And I feel like what they feel like they connect with the crowd with and they that's what it's more likely to stick around i hope they keep playing the david childers covers i really love those um i had the chance to talk to david such a nice guy one of the nicest people i've ever talked to um and they really have a connection it seems like with him so and i feel like they owe a lot to david i mean he helped them out a ton early on you know he's the first you know album released on ramsey records yeah i mean there's a lot that he helped them with you know, and I think just as an artist and as, you know, and even when obviously they just toured around, you know, locally at the time when they put open for him, but they still, I feel like they owe him some. And, you know, and he's such a great songwriter. He and is. If, you know, if he was, if he is 20 years old right now, 25 years old, writing these songs, he'd be touring the country, killing it. Oh, absolutely. Just would. I, I loved it. And he's so humble. Uh, I asked him about his connection with the Avids and he made it sound like, oh, they're just dragging him along for the ride. You know, it's it's no big deal. You know, they're more friends with uh, his son and his son introduced them and all that. But you hear you're saying they owe a lot to him. I think they do. I mean, that's just cool. <laughs> him as a North Carolina songwriter. Oh, yeah. Songwriter. I mean, it's I think they just as an artist, as a performer. You know, he let the you know, he, they opened for him several times and then yeah. they shared the bill a few times and. Answer you know, me this. Know. How is he not in that North Carolina Music Hall of Fame? I asked him that and he's like, because I, I guess I don't I I, I just haven't been asked he's or whatever. He's he says. in. He is in. He told is me he's he not. Wait, no, he's not in. He just opened when Dolph got put in. He's right. No, right. He should be in. He he's crazy. Totally he's should in. be in. I looked at yes. that list. There's people that were like on American Idol that are in there. And yeah. they haven't done anything in music like yeah. he's done. I, he needs to be well, in there. I, we got to do something no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get him in there. He he said he'd be honored and he'd be happy, but he he's also fine with oh. not being in there. I'm like, oh, come yeah. on, you got to be in oh, there. Hopefully it happens. Yeah, it will. It's got to. Um, right. Go, going back to the database, I know mm-hmm. anyone that's listening to this knows all about it and stuff, but explain Ooh. to me and to anyone who may not know what it is, like what, what it, it's, there's so much on there and so much involved on there. What are people going to see if they go on and how, how do they get to it too, for people that may not know? It's DB dot, uh, N O V blue dot com. Okay. That's easier than the old name. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, <laughs> obviously the set list for all shows, well, recent shows are on there and on there. If you go to the set list page, you're going to see the set list. You're going to see YouTube links to any videos for those shows, any pictures from the show, the band lineup, any inform- the poster, mm. any information mm-hmm. about the show, if there was a guest appearance, you know, any other notes about the show. 
And then from there, obviously you can click on the poster and you can go to look at the posters by year, by artist. Right. You know, there's other other memorabilia you can look at there too. But then you can click on a song and you can see how many times, <laughs> you know, in that year in 2022, it was played. How many right. times it was played in 2012? You know, each year you can, there's graphs and charts for everything. It's insane, the amount yeah. of stuff that's on there. Yeah, you can... You know, with each show, you can see which percentage of the albums were played, you know, how many songs from each album. You know, there's information, but like I said, about the songs, the lyrics to each song is on there. So if you have a question about a lyric, they're on there. And that's all accurate, I assume, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, how so, many other bands have something like this? I've never know. thought yeah, about looking for it, but... Well, I mean, there's a version for quite a few bands, whether it be Dave Matthews Band, Grateful Dead. You know, yeah. Grateful Dead used to be massive books put out back in the day with lots of information. And the same thing, Bob Dylan, there's certain sites. Prince has sites. But personally, like originally, I remember when we did this and we were looking for ideas, you know, obviously visited a lot of other things and talked to a lot of other fans who kind of kept track of some artists and... So I'm mean, kind of see what some of them did and I had my own ideas and Paul had ideas. So, I mean, I, I personally think, you know, we have the best site personally of any <laughs> fan groups. Maybe there's, you know, there could be some debate about that, I suppose, but I, I think, I think it's pretty good, which is why, you know, obviously the Billy Strings fans kind of, you know, Paul copied it for them. Yeah. When they have a version, uh, and, you know, there may be other bands. I mean, every once in a while I get contacted by a fan of another band and it's kind of like, you know, tell me what how you do what you do. You so know, they want to try to do the it. same type of thing for their you know, band. But usually that's when I tell them all of the work that's involved, they usually, yeah. like, you know, but. Uh, I, I love that you can sign into your own account on there and keep track of all the shows you've been to, how many songs you've had played, what songs were played at each show you've been to. It's just amazing how it breaks it down to the individual person. Which uh, states you've been to? Yeah, to yeah. The show. Now I've only been to one show, so I'm not <laughs> re not well represented on there. But I do have some of the videos I took from the one show I was at yeah. are are on the database. So I was pretty uh, that was pretty cool that those ended up on there. Um, but it, it's really awesome, and it doesn't cost anything for anyone to go no. on there. No, no. I uh, said so there's still a lot of. I haven't looked at the number, but the last I knew, there were certainly maybe seven thousand or more people signed up. Wow. Of course, you know, I think there should be more. I mean, yeah, there's definitely in, so and there's still like every day there's a few people who sign up, I feel like, because we can I can look and I can't get anybody's information or anything, but right. I can see like when someone signed up. And uh, every, you know, every few days people sign up and more people find out about it. Like, that's my thing is tons of people don't know about it, especially if you don't spend a lot of time online. You're not going to. Right. Well, easily. of course. You know, that's why people go usually like after, say, like a three days of Red Rocks, get a big bump, obviously, of things because people spread the word. Other people will be like, oh, have you ever been on this? People are like, no. And so the word <laughs> spread, fans spread the word. I mean, it's so, great. Yeah, fans I fans do a ton of the work of helping me. Tons of people help me with the set list, videos, pictures. Definitely. You know, Elvon has, uh, she should be like a partner on the whole thing with her pictures. She's such an amazing photographer. I love seeing her pictures. She, she's a great person. Yeah, she really is. Uh, I was lucky enough to get to meet her at the show I was at. Uh, such an eye for photography. Really awesome. Um, okay. Uh, so one of the things you talked about, we may have to do another, like a second part of this because with right. Zoom, we only get like 40 minutes. Um, I have so many questions to ask you, and I'm sure other people want to know stuff, but uh, we talked about, you know, fans having their own meaning of songs and stuff, and the date February 7th is coming up soon, uh, mm -hmm. and the song February 7th, I know every year I seem to see on the social media sites that there's a debate about what the song means, you know, a lot of people think it's about addiction and things like that, do you know, like, the real story of what happened? Well, why that's no, I mean, they like... haven't shared that. The only thing that I know that is that it is something. Well, I mean, obviously, there's depends which version you're talking about. You know, there's the demo version with the extra the Scott verse in there, you know, oh, is in the demo version. How have I? I don't think I've heard that. I've heard that. Yeah, there's a whole verse about, you know, about kind of a friendship almost kind of falling apart in a sense kind oh, of thing. Okay. But um, it is an event that happened. The mo the main the song that was released is uh, 
something that happened something that happened to Seth. Mm-hmm. It's about something that, and that's all I can really say. I mean, whatever it's personal to them, and you know, it doesn't really matter. And people can get whatever they want, you know. And obviously, they, you know, they haven't ever had a problem with addiction with alcohol or anything, but they talk about addictional, you know, every so often because it's not just, you know, you can be addicted to a lot of things in a lot of ways, you know, or you just have a, or just have a relationship with something that isn't healthy. Sure. In a lot of ways, whether that be in a personal relationship or you know you know just anything shopping anything you know scott has often mentioned his problems with shopping back in the day so, <laughs> with shopping really yes he's he used to you know used to have like a ton of boots and a ton of things <laughs> you know and getting rid of things like he had a problem getting rid of things which is why he never got last i knew he still had the ugly brown coat but Not, it wasn't a okay. big to get rid of but he <laughs> kept it as far as i know so he's but, a uh, shopaholic. Is that? Uh... I don't know if it's full of that, but you know, I mean, it's just like, I think with anything, you can question yourself, like, oh, am I doing the right thing? You know, is this is this right? I just sure. think, you know. So really, the song could be about anything. Yes, uh, and that's why I think people can relate it to their own life, and if this is what it sure. means to them, it's fine. Yeah, that's. So I think if, that's why you hear a lot of addiction yeah. stories that and come out of that song. And I don't um, think that they'll ever say on that song what exactly happened or what it was about, but I think. My my personal day. opinion, I always try to look at a song from the songwriter's perspective. And to me, it sounds like it's about his marriage and meeting his now wife. That's what it what I get out of it. And mm-hmm. I have no idea if that's what it's about. Um, but that's that's what I get from it. Um yeah. and obviously they're not gonna talk about it at this point. There's too much other stuff going on, but that's mm-hmm. always intrigued me, that song mm-hmm. and uh what what you think about it. Yeah. And they don't share as much information as they used to about the newer songs. Like okay. if you read every interview nowadays compared to say 2007, yeah, they don't they they kind of you know skirt around the information, especially Scott. Scott be like, well, the song's about blah 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 and just you know goes off into another tangent that has nothing <laughs> to do with the song and never well, actually tells you what the song was about. Well they, they, they were know, a lot they younger back in 2007. Yeah. And, well, so bands they also I think people get into the thing of like oh we got to keep it a mystery. But fans I don't feel that's where I'm saying I understand why artists feel that way but fans I think it helps to have some information. Sure. I always draw back. Do you would I wish it was be as big of a song if it wasn't in May at last? Yeah. No. Wait, I don't think it would. No. If, if you can listen to videos before May at last and hear the crowd pop, you just be like, yeah, after May at last, the reaction 10 times. Like it just blew. And why? Because we got a glimpse. Oh, into we the saw it. Yeah, we saw it being okay. written. And yeah. how they came up with the lyrics yeah. and that when they played it at the show I was at, I was like, oh, man, I can't yeah. believe I'm getting the song. I don't live. think I don't think it's as nearly as big a song to fans if we didn't see just a, gl- a glimpse into it all. If we didn't right. see the process of it. I don't think it's that. I don't think it is. And, and I understand as artists, they don't want to let every you don't want to do that with every song. But it shows that some information, some, you know, give to the fans like some fans do want to know more some fans don't it doesn't make anybody a good or bad fan i do i want to know you everything want to know things i love seeing don't. i love seeing the backstories and how yeah. they came up with stuff but, like but there's like, a video on youtube of them with uh satan pulls the strings or it's called mm-hmm. devil's song yeah. and there's it's basically the whole thing with like uh i wish it was i wish i was um where you saw the process and stuff and i thought that was fascinating um but i don't see that song being as popular well i guess it wasn't on may at last so that's yeah. that's probably why yeah i guess i just think the documentary helped a lot oh sure that. absolutely so. all right um one other thing i talked to john crow about this last week one of his songs that he picked was uh tales of coming news didn't you tell me that they had recorded seth recorded mm, part two of it, that song i don't think they recorded they were supposed oh. to like that was the okay. well his his tales off right, right? And then they were going to just do another version where he, his, his goes on. And then there was going to be supposed to be, you know, they had this idea of a whole series and then there'd be a three and like Scott, uh-huh. would, you know, his Scott's would trail off and then come back. And it's one of those ideas that just didn't come back around. You so know. there isn't a part two out there then waiting. No, no, oh. not that unless oh. you know, like, unless they did record. I mean, as far as I know, cause those were, those were recorded at the time of, um, of Carolina Jubilee. 
So Tales Coming News and The Curve is from then that era. So like 2000, recorded in 2002. And the last thing, the, they only recorded, you know, 16 songs at the time, and that would be the 14 on the album and then those two. So, but the, the plan was always like, oh, we're going to make it part two. And I, I don't think they ever got around to it. Oh, man. All um, right. But whether they might that's have written it, did they have it written? That's a whole nother story because, I mean, they could because they have, you know, you know, they're always writing. They were, always, especially back then. I mean, that's one of the smartest things they ever did as artists is they never stopped writing. And like right. Scott would just, you know, especially Scott, I know for sure, would just fill up notepads of in, in composition books, just writing and writing and writing. And now he gets to go back and steal a line, which is right. kind of how Ain't No Man came to be. Okay. You know, it was just a song from back in 2004, 2005. It really was from you know, that yeah. long ago? Well, oh, not wow. the whole song, but like, like a part of it. Like, okay. you know, and so, you know, he goes back to old writings and is like, oh, this line. And then now builds cool. around that line today. Yeah. So and the same thing. And he was always writing when he was in college. He had tons of notebooks. And, you know, that's like, is even, you know, because obviously November Blue was written during that time in college. Yeah. And so it was denouncing, you yeah. know, denouncing doesn't come out to 2000, you know, until uh, uh, fourth he's gone, 2006. So, you know, but he used to mind what he re- used to write back then. And he still, I'm sure he still does, you know, if he's right. struggling or he just can't think of something and you see something you wrote 20 years ago, like, oh, let's write, let's build around that. Do you ever and get then, to see these notebooks or anything? Me? Oh, no, I don't have nothing to do with it. No. I, you have lots of stuff though, right? <laughs> no, you know, I have I have information that I have. I don't, you know, I have information about things, I suppose. But well, you yeah. are the archivist for the band, but I don't have, you know, I'm more so. I know, like, I don't have that much memorabilia, that many posters, that much stuff. But I know who has a lot of the stuff, and then I have over the years saved every interview, every you know, and have tracked down tons of radio performances, radio yeah. interviews, all of those sort of things. But, you know, as far as their personal things and what they have, I mean, I, I don't have much to do with them at all. I mean, I, okay. you know, they don't help me. I mean, I, I, I asked, you know, recently sent Seth a couple questions and, you know, he didn't answer them. Now, that's the only time in, you know, what, in 17 years I've asked a question, and, you know, yeah. and he didn't answer them. <laughs> so why is that? What did you I ask him? I don't know. That's, that's, their, <laughs> that's their deal. That's their life. That's fine. I don't need, and as I told, when I've talked to Bob before, I mean, I don't need their help. I'm not, I mean, I would take it if there's things, I would, I would ask questions I would have for them, especially maybe in a few more years when I really have everything together, there's questions I would have. And, but at this point, what do I even think they would answer them? I don't think they would. I, I'd be surprised. What, 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 no, go on. No, I'm like, go ahead. Well, what what do you what do they think of what you do? I don't know. I'm sure they just think it's if fans are happy, I would hope that they're happy. But is and I'd say also, I don't do it for them. I do it for the fans. I mean, I right. really have a huge appreciation for Ava fans, and it's the reason I do, I do everything I do. How they feel or what they think isn't a huge concern. Like if I ever come across something that's questionable, I of course send it to Dolph and run it by them and be like, hey, because you know, there's been stories I've heard you know, and stories just talking to people that that have known them for a long time. And if I know it's something personal, I wouldn't put it out there unless they said it was okay. So, I mean, they run, I've run plenty of things by them to be like, okay, yeah. But I mean, I don't get anything from them, you know? Okay. That's, uh, that's interesting, but uh, I understand you're doing it for the fans. It's uh, not necessarily for them, but someday, I think they'll appreciate what you're doing more the older they get and that you have all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. I mean, especially since they didn't save every, you know, right. a band can't know when they're in the middle of it, that they're going to be around 20 years later, 30 years later. Like, do they ever pay attention to the database yeah. and look at like past? Uh, I don't lists? know. I don't know. I mean, I know they know about it, yeah. but whether they look at it to use it to be like, Hey, did we, and we're not when was the last time we played the song right i mean they could easily like, figure it out if they know. can't remember they just have to log in yeah and that, that's it um, so i don't know i don't know if they what they do so i it would be cool if they did i mean it would be useful i feel like for them but they have right. their own ways and own system you know right it's all okay right. all right we got about 10 minutes left this time all always right. goes by so fast uh one of the things you did for me 
uh, this week is you pick the the music. I've been having our, my guests pick the music for the show. Uh, we get about five songs I can fit in after the interview. Uh, tell me the five songs you picked and why you picked them. All right. I have the list that. in front of you. <laughs> yeah, I don't have it in front of me, to be honest with you. Because, you know, I just kind of like, oh, I'll go with these. Uh, well, I picked the Nemo song, Bye Bye Bluebird. Yep. Because I think that's, you know, one of their big biggest songs is a Nemo band. It represents Nemo in their past. And it's a, the song they usually end their shows with. And I mean, it's really just a really good song. I mean, I just think it's their best hard rock song of that time on a whole. So, I mean, recording wise, everything performance wise, it's just a big song. That's an attention grabber too. I yeah. listened to it and that, that actually led off the show. It's going to lead off the show. Oh, right. So that's a, I think a good way to start to get people's attention for this episode. All right. So what's the next right. one you pick? What else did I pick? I got to find. The oh, list I, I can tell you. I have yeah, got it in front of me. Tell me that would be useful. Yeah. We, we got Doc <laughs> Watson wanted man. All right. And this one, you know, because Obviously, I knew of Doc Watson, and as a record collector, I had some albums, but it wasn't huge in my life until basically discovering the Avid Brothers and hearing them play it. Right. And I had to go back and listen to Doc Watson's version. Then it's just always trips me out. You know, Doc Watson's version is like two minutes, you know, 20 seconds. And, you know, they play it sometimes <laughs> in a minute or a little less. Wow. You know, they cut it in half <laughs> how fast <laughs> they would play it back in the day. So, as is always to me, one of their biggest covers of all time. It's you know a, a cover that defines the early years of that those those years of two thousand three to two thousand seven okay. to me. For them, so, so Doc Watson's version of Wanted Man's like two and a half minutes. So something was like their that. version like a minute long? Yeah, the version. I mean, sometimes like a minute ten seconds, something <laughs> like that. I mean, it depends how you know it fluctuates a little bit. There's some that's like a minute thirty, but when they played it, there's times they played it really fast, and it's like a minute. They just know. whip right through it. That's yeah. it. <laughs> so, and that's, that's a, you know, so that's a big song for me, and just okay. for my discovering Doc Watson more. So. That's cool. All right. Then going into the Ava Brothers songs, you have I Love You Still, one we talked about a little bit there. Yeah, uh, that one, just because it's a song I used to listen to a lot when I first discovered that first album, you know, the, the six songs that they made. And, you know, just the whole 2 a.m., you know, in the morning part is something like now I'm a person who used to stay up late a lot. I used to work overnight. So that song would come on and, you know, the whole, you know, you know, about, you know, being up late, you know, at 2 a.m. And also my mom used to always say, you know, nothing good happens at 2 a.m. So it was, you know, <laughs> that song always made me think of that, like my mom and just a song I, I really like and I always related to for just being up late. So if I'm ever up and it's 2 a.m., I mean, I always think of that song if I look at the clock and it says 2 a.m. That's cool. So. That's very cool. All right. Uh, the next one was uh, LOL, LOL. All right. Uh, left on Laura, Left on Lisa. <laughs> Probably my favorite Avid song to see live great song and one of my favorite songs i mean you get a bob verse you get the ad libs and the lyric changes over the years of you know so many times scott has changed you know a line or a lyric or shouted something and so well, that's something i i'm in your long story short your patreon page mm -hmm. which i hope we have a minute or two to talk about um you have like in lots of the the uh, uh the issues uh different lyrics that they've used at different points of songs like over the years like you have like every lyric change <laughs> listed well, that in there. I have, yeah. That you have, right. Yeah, that I, takes a lot of time. That's a, a lot of a lot of listening, a lot of going through. Songs. Right, right. Uh, all right. So anything else about that song you want to talk about? No, this, no, this is one of my favorites. Okay. And the last one was No Hard Feelings. Yeah, the, you know, how can you not love that song? It's just a yeah. big song. I mean, even my wife loves that song and she doesn't care for the band at all. She doesn't care oh, for the band? Oh, not really. Okay. I mean, she loves that song. She actually likes True Sadness, the album on the whole, except for Smithsonian. But you know, yeah, I like Smithsonian. A, she's been to a bunch of shows <laughs> and she has fun, but it's not her thing. Music, it really isn't her thing at all. Okay. And well, that's so my wife, too. It's just not her thing. Does she think you're crazy? No, no. no? I, mean, I think when she <laughs> heard me on the road to now, she was like, really? You do all that? I, she had no idea. Oh, okay. She's like, you know, I don't know. She's like, you know, she's amazed by Avid fans, obviously the kindness and the thoughtfulness of things they've done over the years for me, for my family. Yeah. But, you know, so she's amazed by that. 
when we did the press on fundraiser, she came and, you know, she's amazed about the amount of people that like know me. She's like, you know, these people, you, you know, are a celebrity oh, in oh, the uh, Abit world. That just, you're, you're a very yeah. humble person, but you are, everyone knows you. Everyone loves to reach out and hear about your, your girls. Uh, how are the girls doing? doing? All right. All right. They're sleeping right now though. So yes, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you'll hear soon uh, if they're not, but uh yeah, I, people people just love what you do. They really appreciate what you do, and uh, you give a lot back to the fans. So uh, this is just awesome. So no hard feelings. Anything else about that just song? Big, you know, just a I think a song that will you know define them for their whole career. I mean, look back and it'll be always be a big song. You know, is it going to keep closing every show? I think it'll change. Yeah, I think twenty twenty three it changes. That's really? my prediction. I do. I think you don't changes. have any inside information. That's just no, uh, Tim Mossberger. That's prediction. what I think. I think okay. it. I think it. What, what will it change to? But that's like such a perfect song to end on. Yeah, I mean, I just think it changes here at some point, but I still think it closes some shows, and it's the way they want to send people home. It's what yeah. the song they want people to to remember. So I mean, I think, but I do think it changes some. Oh, that's so. exciting. I, I wonder what they'll pick if it'll be one of the new songs. Uh, if it'll be another old song or what, what, uh, maybe they'll bring back some Nemo stuff to close out the show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you never know. Uh, all right. So we have about three minutes left here. Uh, tell me about your Patreon page. This is, it's, it's inexpensive. Yeah. It does cost a little money, but people get, get some two. great stuff yeah. from joining. I mean, it's, tell me you about can it. sign up for $2 a month and, uh, you get, I put up a, a digital magazine every month. That has videos, audio, tons of pictures, information about things, and also post things up on within on Patreon within the feed. You know, I'll share a video, share some audio, I'll share you know things that I have. So you get that too, all for just two dollars. Obviously, there's other you can pay more, but you can get it for two dollars. You know, but yeah. So if you just go to Patreon, and long story short. You be, or if you just put an Avit, it would come up. Yeah. You know, if you just put Avit Patreon, it comes up. How many so, people are on there right now have joined? I think I'm like 500 know. or so. That's awesome. Five something, right? Or That's is it four great. something? It might and only be four something. It's seriously, four, if, four if, 50, if it's 450. If you're a fan of the band, you need to be a part of that group because it, the, the stuff you share is awesome. It's stuff you're not, a lot of it, you're not going to see anywhere else. Oh, yeah, I there's tons of it you're not going to see. Anymore. I mean, right. a big chunk of it. Yeah. It's great. So everyone go to Patreon and find Long Story Short and sign up. And it's only two bucks a month, worth every penny. So uh, anything else you want to mention here while while I got you here for the oh, last minute or so? You know, just thanks for having me on here. And I'll come back if you want me back. In a, you know? I think we may have to do a part two because oh, there's other stuff fun. I wanted to ask you about the press on fundraiser and all that. We just don't have time right now. So uh, I appreciate your time. I know you're a busy guy. Uh, say hi to the the family and uh, and and we'll have to do this again. Definitely, thank right. you, Tim. Tim Mossberger, everyone, thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>